I'd like to tell y'all a story right quick about an artist formerly known as Beanox 7. See, what happened to him is one day he was out at the Rainbow Gathering and all this weird stuff started happening to him and all these people started saying some things to him about drugs and about how um, profit margin is so high and he started doing some math and he realized this drug lab was real rich. So what happened is he didn't know he was a part of them. Then, one day, all hell broke loose and he decided, I ain't gonna be part of the drug dealing game. These Y'all motherfuckers are crazy. I am basically a Hindu or a Buddhist. I'm like an anti-materialist because it's hard to explain how, uh, how I'm so confident in my situation despite the fact that I live with my parents and I'm broke and I, I, I feel like I, lo I look like an idiot a lot of the time but uh, you wouldn't be you'd be surprised by what I'm capable of maybe not all right so basically what happened is one day I found out that I was part of this drug business or that these people wanted to well, one day I started thinking these people wanted to recruit me I ran away from home and I was like I don't want to be part of the drug business but people were all following me around it was real scary and that's when I, you know, I, I think I talked about it. You can read in my book, um, or in John Alexander's book, uh, Cat Orgies, Terrorist and Monks in the Middle East, but it, that's a non-fiction book, um, which, may, which is probably why there are more errors than I'd like. All right, so um, basically what happened is I stole a car because I, it, it was a very complicated situation. I drove to Vegas, and that was the first time I ever went to Vegas, and it was after someone gave me a lot of acid. He gave me probably... Hunter hits, maybe more, and I was tripping real hard, and uh, I, I thought I was taking four hits, and it was a real strong dose. I, I was pretty pretty tough in, in the acid department back then. Um, so basically, over time, I, I started to learn that I was part of this family, this, this criminal organization, and that the feds had been treating me real bad my whole life. I had no idea that they thought I was, I was like, I, like in middle school, people giving me free meth, like grown men jumping me, beating the shit out of me. They're like trying to get me to commit crimes, trying to get me gang affiliated. So if I go to prison, then I'll, I'll be in a gang. And the next thing you know, I don't have a gang, but he's put them with the gang members, but give them gang tattoos. That's why. All right. So um, basically, I, I figured out the feds were real mean, and I did a hunger strike. And then I tried to go to Washington D.C. to do another hunger strike because my hunger strike failed. Forty-seven days. So I try to go to Washington, D.C. What happens? I get robbed. They always rob me. The feds, like, you don't understand. No one's been robbed by the feds more than me. It's really hard to explain how they just, they just get mad at you. Oh, you're not allowed to have money. Fuck you. And then they rob you, like, because they don't like you, because they think you're selling drugs. But you're not selling drugs. All right, so uh, another time they gave me sunscreen that burnt my face. I was gonna go do a hunger strike in Washington, D.C. a different time. Gave me sunscreen while I was hitchhiking, burnt the shit out of me. Wasn't sunscreen. Um, they always wanna make sure I can't go to Washington, D.C. for some reason, probably because the hunger strike would've worked there. After my first hunger strike, I ran into a four-star general who was the general in Korea. All right, so um, one day, so, so I did my hunger strike, failed, gave up. I, tried, I kept fighting them for years, gave up because I got tired and I, I know one thing, they're censoring me. I go get a master's degree in computers and when I get my master's degree, I know I'm getting spot on and all this stuff's happening. Like, every, like my life has not stopped. You know, it actually just began like years before that, you know, while, while I was fighting the feds and then I just finally got tired of fighting them but it didn't stop my life. My life, the danger continued. I got bomb threats at my school, in my work, in my dad's office, I had all sorts of things happen. My friend told me that they caught a terrorist. Like, um, I, I'm pretty sure they, they caught some crazy cyber attacks. I personally caught a cyber attack on my school computers. They, well, actually, two cyber attacks on my school computers that were not my the school's network. Um, all right, so basically, I thought everyone knew who I was because the hunger strike. I thought everyone in the FBI because I, I've been. I, I, a lot of things have happened, and what happened when I did my hunger strike, what I said is, I don't know anything about these drugs, but these people have been terrible to me my whole life. Why are they so terrible to me? Like, you, you guys are terrible. And then, um, I was like, it's not my fault. 
you can't say I'm guilty because my whole life I was born in this family. And so um, I think that over time that excuse wore off and that's why Bill Barr's after me now, but it's also because I'm running for president, but it's also because I wanted to start World War III. Because he's like, well, now I'm gonna use the law to stop what you're trying to do. But the problem is once you start to do that, then you have to face the fact that y'all are fascists and you know that the only person, like, it's, it's crazy how I can point to specific times throughout my life that you clearly were fascist because you thought that there was no way I would ever speak. And that's the thing. I don't know if I can get out on the internet, but fortunately, I'm a cybersecurity person. Cybersecurity people can get through censorship better than other people, as, but they still depend on who the, who the video's going to. They depend on Twitter. Um, they depend on Facebook. I, 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 I I have my computer and then they have their computer, but between us, there's nothing I can do. So I depend on them to keep me from being censored. All right, so I have caught the government censoring me. I caught, I don't want to talk about it. All I'm saying is that's how I got in this situation. For a long time, I had no, I, for my entire life, I had no idea the drugs existed, but people were always setting me up to commit crimes. Like, my entire life, they're setting me up to commit crimes. And then I did this hunger strike. I didn't know who anyone was. Because, like, you're, they're all, they're all, no one's ever showed me a badge. Even after, at the end of my hunger strike, or no, no, before my hunger strike, when I ran away from these drug dealers, I was like, I'm not going to be a drug dealer. This Guy pulls out a bag, this badge, like a, a badge that says he's a he's a military chemical inspector or something. He, he didn't show me FBI badge. It was weird. Uh, and then I, I just I just kept telling him I think my friend's a good person. This friend that I had met, who I'm pretty sure was trying to get me to snap, but I'm not sure. <coughs> I think she was trying to get me to start, start snitching.